Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and this week we're going to share some of the best moments from our Q23 rally, which took place last week in Quartzsite, Arizona. We'll share potluck meals, put some marshmallows and pie irons in the fire, see the sights around Quartzsite during the RV show, journey to Yuma to explore the Arizona Territorial Prison, and of course, relax with friends old and new around the campfire. So stay tuned. The Q23 rally in southwestern Arizona's Sonoran Desert was co-sponsored by Grand Adventure, Traveling Robert, Rambling Voyage, and Worth Every Mile. Close to 100 RVers gathered near Quartzsite, boondocking on BLM land in the La Posa South long-term visitor area. For good times, good food, and good friendships. Let's take a few minutes to share some visual highlights of the week with you.
Following a quick ad break to pay the bills, we'll bring you along for a visit to historic Yuma in the BOM's Imperial Dam long-term visitor area across the Colorado River in California. We caravan with Living Our Journey 365 and our West Virginia friends Sue and Jim about 90 minutes south of Quartzsite to the Yuma Territorial Prison State Historic Park, located a mere six miles from the Mexican border. Open while Arizona was still a U.S. territory, the prison accepted its first inmate in 1876. For the next 33 years, more than 3,000 prisoners, including 29 women, served sentences there for crimes ranging from murder to polygamy. Well-known inmates included train robbers, Bill Downing and Bert Alvord, murderer Buckskin Frank Leslie, legendary stagecoach robber Pearl Hart, Mexican revolutionary Ricardo Flores Magon, outlaw Pete Spence from the gunfight at the OK Corral, and Mormon pioneer William J. Flake. The prison was under continuous construction with labor provided by the prisoners and eventually outgrew the small tabletop overlooking the Colorado River upon which it was built. In 1909, the last prisoner left the territorial prison for the newly constructed Arizona State Prison Complex, located in Florence, Arizona. The prison earned its nickname the Hell Hole, possibly due to cells with little ventilation during the scorching summertime temperatures, but more likely due to the prison's dark, windowless, solitary confinement cell. Actor Russell Crowe's character was headed for the hellhole in the movie 310 to Yuma. Nevertheless, as far as late 19th century prisons go, conditions at Yuma were pretty good, including electric lighting, although cells had no indoor plumbing. Two foot thick adobe walls, studded with chunks of granite, kept most of the prisoners contained.
Yuma Territorial Prison State Historic Park is one of the Yuma Crossing and associated sites in the Yuma Crossing National Heritage Area. Here, the Colorado River narrows between two massive granite outcroppings, providing the safest crossing point for a thousand miles. The Ocean to Ocean Highway Bridge opened in 1915 as the only highway bridge across the Colorado River for 1,200 miles. Here at Pivot Point Plaza, a restored 1907 Baldwin steam locomotive sits at the exact site where the first railroad train entered Arizona in 1877. In 1850, a military post was established at Yuma. And following rich placer gold strikes on the Colorado River, a gold rush and accompanying economic boom ensued in 1858. Downtown Yuma today is an inviting collection of historic buildings, art galleries, restaurants, and microbreweries. While the irrigated farmlands surrounding Yuma are an agricultural paradise for growing lettuce, kale, cauliflower, broccoli, herbs, root vegetables, dates, melons, and lawn grass. That agriculture has contributed to today's Colorado River, becoming a mere trickle of what it once was. Imperial Dam, completed in 1938, straddles the California-Arizona border 20 miles north of Yuma and diverts Colorado River water to southeastern California, Arizona, and Mexico. It's here on the California side that the BOM operates another 3,500-acre long-term visitor area, similar to those in Quartzsite, allowing campers to spend up to seven months, from September 15th to April 15th, for a $180 permit fee. And if you're a military buff, don't miss the armament display at the Yuma Proving Grounds, en route back to Quartzsite. So we had a ball down at Q23, and we're pretty sure that everybody else in attendance did too. We're already had some plans for Q24, so if this looked like a good time to you, we would love to have you join us for Q24 in Quartzsite, Arizona, coming up January 20th to 28th, 2024. Again, coinciding with the Big Tent Week, the RV show in Quartzsite. Keep a close eye on our channel, we will have more details forthcoming as they start to take shape. We rushed back here to Utah to get to Salt Lake City uh, uh, in advance of an approaching winter storm. And we barely made it. Talk about good timing. We got here within 15 minutes of the first flake starting to fall. But behind that storm is the coldest air that we've been experiencing all year. It was seven degrees outside when I got up this morning and found that our water was not coming out of the faucets. Uh, despite a heated hose, and despite all of our water connections being in an enclosed wet bay where I have an oscillating desktop ceramic heater to also help keep everything nice and warm and toasty down there, our water pressure regulator and our water filtration system were both frozen solid. Turns out, they're a little too close to the baggage door, and they're sitting in that wet bay tray that's nothing more than a thin sheet of plastic separating it from the outside air. I'm gonna add some closed cell foam insulation to that little tray, try and make it a little easier to try and keep the cold out and the warm in, and I'm hoping it works because it's going down to about three degrees tonight. Burr. God, I'm getting cold just thinking about it and missing that warm Arizona sunshine down at Quartzsite. If you are not yet a grand adventurer yourself, now is the perfect time for you to go smash that little subscribe button right down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you never miss a grand adventure which we air every Wednesday evening. We'd be truly honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. 
But understand, it's extremely important to us that if you liked this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, that's where you'll find the comment section where we'd love to hear from you after each grand adventure. So until next week, please remember, life is indeed nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.